Okay, so last night we had spaghetti, and uh, I'm going to dehydrate the leftovers, and I'll vacuum pack it afterwards and see how that turns out. Uh, the spaghetti, I used uh, thin noodles, uh, I used uh, ground, it's a meat sauce, and the thin noodles, I cut them into short pieces of noodles so to help in the dehydration process. Also when the the meat was uh, cooked separately uh, before mixing it all together and you have to make sure that you break down any large crumbs and when you lay it down you try to spread it as much as possible. I had enough leftovers to make two trays and a, only a little bit left for the bottom tray. So I put that tray in the bottom um, so the, the dehydration process will be concentrated on the full uh, trays. Somewhere along the way uh, I'll probably rotate the trays to make sure that they are dehydrating evenly. Let's see what happens. The setting I'm using is the highest setting for meats, which is 160 degrees. Uh, I'll check on it in, in about an hour, see how it's doing, and I may rotate at that time uh, and then set it back on. So this is what they look like. It's been dehydrating for a while now. The the beef uh, it's nice and solid. I just want to make sure this one it's a little bit springy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip them over for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to turn it on for a few more minutes and get the other side. What I'm using it's a, a simple uh, <clears throat> baking uh, spatula to help me flip it over. So it's been a little while now and <clears throat> looks like everything is nice and crispy. This was a little spongy before, now it's nice and crispy. So now all we have to do is <clears throat> um, bag it, vacuum pack it, and we have a meal, uh, an already cooked meal, that all we have to do is hydrate it with a little bit of uh, warm water. And voila, you have homemade spaghetti. Okay, so now we have the uh, <clears throat> spaghetti all dehydrated. I've marked the bag, I put the date and what it is. Now all I'm going to do is uh, vacuum seal it and that's it. I'm not going to put an oxygen eliminator inside the bag because uh, this is not going to last very long. I'm, we're going to eat it uh, pretty soon uh, to continue the experiment. But uh, if I were going to bag this for long term, I would put an oxygen eliminator inside the bag before I sealed it. So let's get it done. I'm going to put it right over here so that it's in the vacuum channel. The opening is in the vacuum channel. Just bring it down, lock it. One thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to stop from taking all the oxygen out because these spaghettis may have some sharp edges and I don't want it to puncture the bag. So I'm going to seal it at this point and leave a little bit of oxygen. Like I said before, we're probably going to eat this uh, very soon.
finished feeling. As you can see over here, you can see the line where it melted all the way across sealing it. So it took out a lot of oxygen but it still has some. Now I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing. I probably will leave a little bit more air than I did on that first one. Line it up with the opening to the vacuum channel. Lock it. That's good enough. Now I'm sealing. And there it is. And you can see the seal over here again. One thing I've seen people do on YouTube is in order to avoid puncturing the bag, they take a paper towel and they put it in, then put in the food, or the spaghetti in this case, and that way when they shrink it, there's an insulation of paper towel between the spaghetti and the bag, and that it's enough to keep it from puncturing if it if it were to puncture it and uh, at the same time when you open this you have a paper towel that you can use to wipe your hands afterwards very good idea